Today, I'd like to share with you the results of a whisper project that I've been working on for the last couple of months. Now, I suspect that if you're watching this video, you already know what whisper is. And if that is true, please have some patience while I cover some basic concepts like what is whisper, what's it good for, and how does it work, particularly as to how it relates to this project. Well, the letters themselves, WSPR, stand for Weak Signal Propagation Reporter. And for those who take advantage of it, it brings to the ham radio world a way to make data-based assessment of the effectiveness of your antenna system. Now, that sounds like a mouthful. So maybe a better way to put it is it gives you honest RST reports. Prior to its implementation, amateurs pretty much had to rely on anecdotal reports to evaluate their antenna systems. To explain the how it works part, let's start at the receive side. Whisper participants have set up receivers all over the world and are listening at designated 200 hertz segments in each amateur band for whisper transmissions. The output of a whisper receiver is connected to a computer that is running whisper software. This software looks for whisper encoded signals and when found will attempt to decode them. If successful the results can be uploaded to a public website. Additionally the software calculates each decoded signals relative signal to noise ratio and because all stations are using essentially the same software, these signal-to-noise numbers can be thought of as being fairly reliable. Interested parties can then view this aggregated data using numerous filters that the website has to offer. Also, it's possible to download the raw data, enabling the user to apply their own tools to analyze it. Now, Going back to the transmit side of things, transmitting stations send three pieces of information. Their call sign, their maidenhead location, and the transmission's RF power level. The Whisper protocol packs this information into 50 bits and then adds another 31 bits to the package. Without going into all the details, I'll just say that the protocol takes 110.6 seconds to send these 81 bits twice using a four frequency MFSK carrier. As such, a whisper transmission consumes approximately 6 hertz of bandwidth. So even though the whisper designated regions are only 200 hertz wide, it's possible for quite a few transmitting stations to be active at the same time. Probably the most common question I get when talking about whisper is, does a whisper report count in any of the contact recognition systems that many amateurs aspire to, like DXCC or WAS? The short answer is no. However, it wouldn't surprise me if somebody did come up with some kind of whisper-based recognition system like the highest miles per watt or most stations heard in 24 hours. But at its core, Whisper is there to provide factual information related to propagation across the RF spectrum. So in that sense, it turns the hobby upside down and gets folks looking to see what, how little power is needed rather than how to maximize their transmitter's output. Because of this quest to go low, I suspect many whisper transmissions go undetected when tuned across by the casual listener. And when they are heard by a tone-deaf person like myself, they will often be perceived as nothing more than a simple unmodulated carrier. Okay, let's move on and look a little closer at what I use to make my first whisper contacts. And suspect it's the same configuration that probably most first-time users start with. That is, it consisted of an internet-linked laptop computer, a sound card, and a 100-watt single sideband transceiver that had been throttled back to 5 watts. 
The internet link was needed to ensure my, that my transmissions were time synced correctly and to provide a pathway to pass decoded whisper transmissions back to the website. Initially, I was extremely impressed that this configuration produced reports of my call being heard around the world. But soon that rush of satisfaction morphed into a sense that I was effectively using a cannon to kill flies, especially on the transmit side of things. On the other hand, given the precision and timing and frequency stability needed to send a whisper transmission, to consider using anything less seemed like it would be doomed to failure. However, having done earlier projects using the AD9850 and the Adreno, it seemed like these pieces might be used as the heart of a low-cost alternative. In fact, once I got over the mental block that more was needed, this combination proved to be a perfectly good fit for the project. Now, to be clear, I'm not the first person to climb this mountain, but at the time I started, was unaware of the accomplishment of others. So what you see here is my entry into what is probably by some now considered a classic project. It is a free-running, homemade, 100 milliwatt whisper transmitter and as shown even if all parts were purchased new probably represents an investment of less than thirty dollars far less than the sixteen hundred dollars i had tied up in the original setup but hey one could argue those were sunk cost dollars and as such don't count but on the other hand when whispering the transceiver couldn't be used for anything else so there was some real pain related to this process and was hard to ignore. Now back to the cost of this project. The AD9850 can be had for about nine dollars US and the Adreno SS Micro goes for less than five. For a user interface I added a KY040 encoder switch and a 128 by 64 OLED display. The encoder switch was approximately 450 and the display was about $8. Both shipped from within the US. Had I been willing to wait for a shipment from China, these could have been had at half that price. In its current configuration, it is provisioned to operate on four bands. 160, 80, 40, and 30 meters. Although, to be honest, I have yet to build the 160 meter output filter, but have made the other three and can happily report that the output is consistent on the top three bands. So the software also supports a fifth calibrate position where you zero beat the DDS against WWV to achieve spot-on frequency transmissions. Another point to note is that this unit runs on 5 volts, not 12, so a simple USB wall board is all that's needed to power it up. For those of you lucky enough to have two antennas for the same band and are curious as to which is the better performer, in my opinion, it would be feasible to build two of these, one for each antenna, and using the Whisper Web Reporter, get real side-by-side -side analytical data. Personally, for me, the fun of this project lay in the journey, learning what makes up a Whisper transmission and then writing a program that turns the Adreno into a Whisper encoder and driver for the AD9850. Equally fun was designing and using everyday parts to build a 5 volt 100 milliwatt amplifier. It's a four transistor unit where the first three transistors somewhat mimic the MAR-6 broadband IC while the fourth transistor, a plastic version of the 2N2222, runs class C to realize approximately 100 milliwatts output with 4 volts across its emitter to collector terminals. Its output is coupled to a low pass matching network using a quad filler wound toroid where three of the four windings are connected in series and the fourth kept separate provides DC isolation for the 2N2222 circuit. 
This arrangement provides a 9 to 1 step up in output impedance, making it easier to build the low pass output network. Finally, the components of this amplifier are mounted on a separate board, making it relatively easy to build and test various amplifier designs. Okay, now let's take a peek at putting the unit on the air. I'm going to assume you know how to use the Adrena's IDE to load a sketch, so won't go into that kind of detail. But do want to point out that before loading the sketch, there are five or six lines that need to be set to reflect what, where, and when the unit transmits. First, this line needs to reflect the station's call sign. Second, its location gets set here. And third, the transmitter power level gets set, goes here. Remember, we're talking not watts, but dBm, so 20 represents 100 milliwatts. Next, where in the band's 200 hertz window gets set here. And this is entered as an offset. For example, zero means that the unit will transmit right in the middle of the selected band, while minus 75 means it'll transmit 75 hertz below center. Or another way to say it is the transmitted signal will be 25 hertz above the bottom band frequency. And then the last setting to be entered is the interval between transmissions. This is akin to the transmit percentage setting found in the WSJT software, but differs in that it yields a fixed interval, whereas the WSJT software gives random timing. I typically use 5, which means that there is 12 minute interval there is a 12 minute interval between the start of two transmissions or a little more than 10 minutes dead time between transmissions. In addition to the station and user preference settings just described, there are two equipment specific parameters that need to be declared as well. Each is here to address the inaccuracy of their respective crystal clock. This one, for the 9850's clock, gets its value by using the encoder switch while the unit is running in the calibrate mode mentioned earlier to zero beat the 10 megahertz WWV signal. The second parameter, MS correction, compensates for error in the Adreno's clock. It's typically found by letting the unit run for an extended period, like overnight, and then noting the change in the reported time error using an external receiver and companion WSJT software. In my mind, these parameters are set once and forget parameters, but in fact may require multiple checks to accurately get dialed in. Okay, we've got the unit built and the sketch installed. Now let's look at putting it on the air. You might remember earlier I called it free running. What I mean by that is it's not linked to an external time standard. So how do you get it to work with a transmission mode that is? Well it turns out that time-wise Whisper is actually pretty tolerant and will decode signals that are off by as much as plus or minus two seconds. So here's how I do it. I have the WSJT software running on a computer that is time synced to NIST. The WSJT software has a nice easy to read clock and with the transmitter connected to the antenna and powered up I just wait for the WSJT clock to read an even minute plus one second and at that moment press the encoder switches push button and that's it. It's off and running and will continue to transmit at the preset interval loaded into the sketch and will do that until power is removed, typically by unplugging the USB connector. Notice that as the unit transmits, the OLED display indicates the number of bits left to send and which of the four symbols it's currently sending. 
Here's a scope view of the 10.14 MHz signal taken at the amplifier's antenna test point. It appears to be approximately 6 volts peak to peak. Now, let's fast forward to the end of the transmission. Notice that at completion, the display shows the transmission's duration, 10.6 seconds, as well as the amount of time remaining to the start of the next transmission. Not shown, but if you want during this wait interval, you can use the encoder switch to change bands without disturbing the next start time. But of course, if the band is changed, the output filter needs to be changed too. Finally, I'll close with showing the stations that heard the test transmission sent to make the preceding segment. Thanks for watching, and I hope it's given you some ideas about how you might use Whisper or the components shown here to further your exploration in this area. Goodbye and good luck with your next project.